In this lesson, we shall focus on uh, mathematics, right? Calculus in higher dimensions. We are looking at MAT 2615. And we're looking at the kinds of questions that must be learned for examination purposes. And this is not at all different, right? We're looking at question four, right? And this question four is that it's actually a carefully selected question, a popular question in uh, the past years. Consider the R2 to R function f defined by f of x and y, which equals x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Let v be the plane that is tangent to the graph of f at the point x, y, z equals 1 minus 1 and 4. Find a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. Find a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. The question is, how do we do this question? How do we find a vector that is perpendicular to the plane V? Because V is actually a plane that is tangent to the graph of F at the point 1, minus 1, and 4. For four marks, we need to find a vector that is perpendicular to the plane or a vector that is orthogonal to the plane. And to do that, we use the derivative. So we're going to do the question 4a. And we let, right, and so we let the following. So to find a vector in particular plane, we actually consider, let's first start by considering the following. Let us start by considering the following. So first things first, we would like to then say, let us consider first. Consider. Right, so consider the function f, which is a function of two variables, and we call it x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Okay, and let. And let g of x, y, z which is uh, the same as uh, the following. So we introduce a new function. We call g of uh, three variables. And uh, it is going to be the function f, x, and y minus uh, um, the variable z. And uh, by dint of this, uh, this means that our function g of x, y, z is the function f, which is x squared minus 2xy plus y squared minus z. Minus z. And upon careful examination, we have uh, exactly the following. We moreover are able to note that the gradient, the gradient of the function g is a vector, is normal, is normal to the graph. Right, is normal to the graph of f. And at this point, uh, we can be able to find uh, the gradient. The gradient of the function g. And g is a function of three variables, x, y, and z. And the gradient of g can be actually also seen as uh, the following. We can write the gradient of g as... Uh, the gradient of the function g. And uh, as a consequence, this gradient of g can be seen as uh, gx, gy, partial z, which means the gradient of the function g So you differentiate G with respect to X. 
And if you do, with respect to x, the derivative of x squared becomes 2x. The derivative of minus 2xy is uh, minus 2y with respect to x. And the, deriv the partial derivatives of uh, y squared and minus z are simultaneously zero, both. GY is the partial derivative of the function G with respect to the variable Y. And uh, now the derivative of G here becomes zero. The derivative of, uh, because yeah, the derivative of X squared with respect to Y is zero. And the derivative of minus two XY with respect to Y is negative two X. With respect to Y, the Y squared has the, the derivative two Y. Next. Now we next uh, computer because we want to find a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. The question is how do we find a vector perpendicular to uh, the plane? If you have been given that this plane, uh, the plane that is tangent to the graph of F at this point, it is tangent to the graph of F at this point. A, a vector. I'm sorry, can I please disturb you? Yes, please. Um. My network wasn't working, but I don't understand why you introduced the new G. I mean, yeah, the new the function new function G. G. Yes, and why are we doing the? What's this derivative of G? The gradient, the gradient of G. And yes, yes, why? Good, right. It is a strong. Okay, first. We introduce uh, G because we have been given a function f of two variables. Right, of two variables. And these variables, x and y. Those are the two variables of x, which are x and y. So that then in the end, we have the following. Right, so now, okay, we have a function of two variables. This is very important. So if this function is a function of two variables, we introduce another function g. And uh, this g is of three variables. Because uh, the point is actually um, an ordered triple. Because you are told that V, let V be the plane that is tangent to the graph of F at the point. So this plane is, a, is, a, is, is tangent to the graph of F at the point. As a consequence, then what we're then having is that also this function here is a, is a paraboloid. Because uh, if you look at it very carefully, you have the function f, but the function f of x and y is x minus y squared. x minus y squared, which is exactly this. So this one qualifies to be called a paraboloid. Introducing this means that this function, which is a paraboloid, is f, but it is also z. So we have variables 1, 2, 3. So the points, the points must be three variable points. But the g, the, the f is two variables. So we must introduce an, a third variable, and we, intro, we always introduce a minus z. Uh, right, so that we form g, and the g is a function of x, y, and z, and this is f of x and y minus z. And now, then, we formed a new function g, which is an order triple. Right now, the g, the gradient of g is normal to the graph of f. So the gradient of g, x, y, z is this, which is g, x, g, y, g, z. Right, with the gradient is also written as the, the del, del of g like del. So now we're dealing with the del of G. Okay, now we're finding here the GZ. You find that the derivative of this with respect to Z, zero. 
this term with respect to z zero, the derivative of y squared with respect to z zero, the derivative of minus z with respect to z becomes a negative one, like so. This is uh, actually what uh, we have got. And so we can continue then and say, therefore, therefore the gradient of G1 minus 1 4 1 minus 1 4 so you put so it's going to be 2 x is 1 y is minus 1 x is 1, y is minus 1, so that this in the end it becomes 2 plus 2, which is 4, minus 2 minus 2, which is minus 4, and then minus 1, and this therefore means the gradient, the vector that is perpendicular to the plane V is this one. So the gradient of a function produces a vector that is perpendicular to the plane that is tangent to the graph. So now this paraboloid is a paraboloid of minimum vertex like this. If it's a paraboloid of minimum vertex this way, and uh, you can draw a tangent plane to it. So if there is a tangent plane to it, like this, okay, so Okay, this is the plane. A plane is a two-dimensional formation. It is tangent to the paraboloid. And you want to find a vector that is, uh, it is tangent and it touches at one point. One minus one, four. And uh, this is the plane. Like so. Then we are asking the question, find a vector that is what? Perpendicular to this plane. This plane is tangent to this. To find a vector that is perpendicular to the plane, you need to find the gradient. This gradient function, um, which is the derivative of the function, right? Um, it's able to produce um the a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. A vector that is perpendicular to the plane. Any question on this one? So this is the vector. This is the vector that we have got. This one is the vector. This one is the vector. Right, so now we have solved the question A. This question is very popular. That is why we are doing it here. It's very popular. That is why we're doing it. Because it's so, so popular. Very, very popular. So it's the kind of question that um, you must uh, take note of. You must uh, take note of. Right. We move on. Next, we need to find an equation for the plane V. How do we find an equation for the plane V? Right. 
So now, right, right. So we continue because yes. we just yes, we use the del del of g, but del of g is also called it's also written like this. And it is also called uh, it is also called uh, nabla, right? So it would be nabla of G. So this would be nabla, nabla of G. Okay, now at this point, to find uh, the, to answer the question B, to find uh, an equation for the plane, we're going to use uh, the formula that is very famous. So we use uh, x dot n is equal to p dot n. This is the formula that we learn, and uh, it is a very important formula that must be understood. So now this formula here allows us to take an arbitrary vector x with the co uh, coordinates x, y, z, like this, times minus that we take a point. This is the point. 1 minus 1, 4. Dot 4 minus 4 minus 1. 4x minus 4y, which is 4 plus 4 minus 4. Minus z four minus four is zero, and then you are left with only what? We're left with only four, and this is the equation for the plane. So to find the equation of a plane, we use this formula: x n equals p n. Right, vector x dot vector n, which is the normal vector. So now we note that this n is called the normal, the normal vector. Simultaneously. We know that this one here denotes the x dot n equals p dot n is called the equation. It's, it's the formula for finding the equation. The equation of a plane. Right. It's the formula for finding the equation of a what? The equation of a plane. So we have answered the question that said find an equation for the plane. This is the equation of a plane. How do you find the equation of a plane? We use x dot n. This is the dot product. Right. And so now, if you say two vectors, you take the dot product, you take the point vector, and then you dot it with, with n, and then this becomes what you call component multiplication. So that you have, uh, if this vector dot this one, the vector x dot the normal, it's going to be x times 4, which is 4x. Uh, and then uh, y times minus 4 is minus 4y, z times minus 1 is this. And then we have 1 times 4, which gives us a 4, minus 1 times uh, minus 4, giving us a 4. 4 times minus 1 gives us uh, actually a minus 4. And then we simplify everything, get to this. And this is the answer. This is the answer. This becomes the answer. We move on to the next question. We proceed to the next question. Right. We proceed to the next question. Yes, yes. All right, good. In the next question, we're going to tackle question C that says find an equation for the line. How do we find an equation for the line that contains the point 1 and 1 minus 1, 4, and uh, is perpendicular to the plane V? 
Let us continue to check this out. Let us continue and check this out. So now in checking this out, the couple of things that we need to do here. Right, and uh, we need to check the following and make sure that everything is well and very much, very much okay. So, to find the equation of a line, we actually do the following. We say such a line, that is what we write first, such a line, right, such a line is parallel. Is parallel to right because it is perpendicular to the plane. If I find an equation for the line L that contains the point and is perpendicular to the plane. Perpendicular to the plane, it means it's parallel to the normal. Perpendicular to the plane implies that it is parallel, parallel to the normal. It's parallel to 4 minus that. So its equation its equation is x y z so it contains the point this plus t which is if it contains a point, you put this point first. And because it's parallel to the normal, the normal, we got it in the previous question, which is 4 minus 4 minus 1. And then t is our parameter, and the t is a, an element of the set of what? Of real numbers. Okay, but now we can uh, simplify this thing. So this is the answer. If you don't write the answer like this, you say or. Or x, y, z. You can multiply 1 minus 1, 4 plus, then you have 4t minus 4t minus t. So you can multiply everything like this. And then this one here, it's going to become x, y, z. One plus four t minus one minus four t four minus t t is r, which means that you can say the equation of the line is given as a, this particular uh, parametric equations. And the parametric equations are as follows. They are as follows. Which means that X. X of T is the same as 1 plus 4 T. Y of t is minus 1 minus 40. Z of t is uh, 4 minus t. And t is an element of the set of real numbers. So to find the equation of a line, this is what we do. This is exactly what we do. So we... Put the point T into a par the parallel vector. So you have 1 minus 1, 4.
right? So x y z, which is one plus four t minus one minus four t four minus t. X is one plus four t. Y is minus one minus four t. Z is four minus t. T is an element of R. Okay, yeah, so that would be. Okay, that is the equation for the line L. And this equation of the line L, it contains the point 1 minus 1, 4. So you put the point here, plus the parameter T times the normal, times the vector parallel to the line. So this vector, it's a vector that is parallel to the line. Parallel to the line. It is a vector that is parallel to the line. This is the answer. Think about it. Okay. Yeah, make sure you understand how to find the equation of a line. To find the equation of a line, you need two things. You need a point through which the line passes because this line contains the point 1 minus 1, 4. But it is also parallel to this vector. Because we've been given something here. We've been given a paraboloid. This paraboloid has a plane. Right. And this plane is tangent to this at a point. Okay. Okay. Now look, if this plane is tangent to this, then we, we used the grade. Grade to obtain a normal to a vector that is perpendicular to this plane. And now if we're told that the equation of the line that contains the point is perpendicular to the plane, so a line that is going to be perpendicular to the plane is going to be like the normal because they are both perpendicular. So that this line and the normal are, are parallel because they are both perpendicular to the plane. So to find the equation, we need one vector that is parallel to the line, which is the normal, and the equation of the normal vector is 4 minus 4 minus 1. And then this particular normal vector uh, this particular line, excuse, passes through 1 minus 1, 4. Passes through 1 minus 1, 4. So we continue. Yes. Right, we continue. And then we look at the next question. We look at the next question. Right, so now, okay, yeah, there are other things I want us to discuss. There are tons of questions which I'll give you homeworks as well and many other things. I want us to spend some time on these uh, kinds of questions. I want us to spend some time on these kinds of questions. Let D be the region in R3 below the plane Z equals 2. And above the surface, x squared plus y squared minus 2. This x squared plus y squared minus 2 is a paraboloid. This one. It's a paraboloid. It's a parabola in three dimensions. Make a, make a three-dimensional sketch of D. Let us look at how we can do this one. Make a three-dimensional sketch of D. Right, so we continue with our investigation. Yes. We continue with our investigation, right? So what we're going to look at right now is uh, how to make it the three-dimensional sketch. Let us make it this three-dimensional sketch, right? So in making the three-dimensional sketch, there are a couple of things that we need to take into account because we want to understand planes, but also we want to understand normal vectors. Right, we want to understand normal vectors. Okay, so we are continuing, please. We are going yes. on. Yeah, we are going on with this question. Very interesting, but we want to sketch first. 
So in sketching, we will focus on the particular things. As the following things are important. Um, can you please explain what makes this um surface equation a paraboloid? Like, how can I see whether it's a paraboloid, yes, a paraboloid or, or not? Right, because it is from high school. There's something called a parabola. Because we see degree two, y equals x squared. Or you can see y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, this one is called a parabola. Right, so now then there is, if it is z equals x squared, it's because obviously you are dealing with z. Right, you are dealing with z. So z equals x squared, for instance, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a paraboloid that is such that it is a um in the z x or you can say x z plane. Right. So in the x z plane, what do you do? You remove something. You can remove y. Okay. You remove y, and then you are left with these. So you can do. You can extend z like this. You can extend x like this, for example. And then now you, your z equals x squared, meaning that z is going to be positive. So this is the kind of graph. So this is going to be the parabola that is going to be in the xz plane. But now, this, because these things are in three dimensions, you call it a paraboloid. But this three dimensional play, play it has been built with great ingenuity and creativity. Because now it is a combination of one orthogonal axis called the y-axis that is perpendicular to the x and the y-axis they combined. Paraboloid is seen by the degree two in the same way that a parabola is y equals x squared plus b plus c. And then we, we have a quadratic formula that we use uh, to solve this one. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Make a three-dimensional sketch of D. Right. Make a three-dimensional sketch of D. We shall make the sketches. We are making the sketches here. Right. So as we are making this particular sketch, I want us to focus on some stuff that becomes so, so important. Some stuff that becomes extremely important. Right, the question is how do we sketch this here? How do we, okay, the, the way we sketch a parabola, we x and y, then we do this. And then that is the parabola, like y equals x squared. Right. So now let us look at 4.1. So to sketch a parabola, this is in three dimensions. So we're going to have this. Z, Y, X. Right. So. Well, now, obviously, if we look at the equation, Z is y squared, uh, x squared minus 2. So when uh, when these are both 0, then z is minus 2. So which means that we're going to have the following. So you're going to sketch like this. And then you're also going to sketch like this. Right, so this is the situation. But now, at the point that... So it becomes uh, this one whose equation is z equals uh, x squared plus y squared minus 2. Okay, but... Whenever z equals 2... Then you're going to have z 
is x squared plus y squared minus 2. But if z is 2, then it's going to be x squared plus y squared minus 2, which means that 4 is x squared plus y squared. Okay. And this means that there is another curve, x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. So which means that at this point, whenever z is 2, then this thing becomes a circle. Because x squared plus y squared is equal to 2 squared. It's a circle. It's a circle center. 0, 0 radius. Radius R equals 2. Radius R equals 2. Radius R equals 2. Radius R equals 2. So this is it. We have made a three-dimensional sketch and this is enough. So this three-dimensional sketch, you can see it like this. So it's like it's like a it's like a vase. It's like a vase or a vase. Okay. Now the question is, what is the right pronunciation? Okay. Normally vase is the pronunciation, but it looks like this, like a jar, like a jar. Okay. So we have sketched this one and it is called uh, a paraboloid. Paraboloid. So now, the couple of features of the paraboloid we did not spend a lot of time on, like in the x-y plane, to sketch this, z becomes zero. Z becomes zero, which means that whenever z is zero, zero is x squared plus y squared minus two. Which means, therefore, you have x squared plus y squared equals two. Which means that at this point, uh, you're going to have a situation where this thing becomes like a circle here. But it becomes a circle when this is equal to 2, then you can put the square and square everything. Because for us, the circles from high school, they are x squared plus y squared is equal to radius squared. With me, meaning that uh, obviously you're going to have the square root of 2 there. All right. But now this would be just uh, the description of uh, our paraboloid. And then uh, we proceed to the next question. In the next question, you can express the volume of D and the triple integral using cylindrical coordinates. Let's look at that one. Cylindrical coordinates. Now, cylindrical coordinates focus on the fact that if you have a three-dimensional setup, Z, Y, X. And then you have this. And then you have um, minus two, two. Uh, now, express the volume of D as a triple integral, triple integral using cylindrical coordinates. There is a, in 4.2, you have D. For the, for the cylindrical coordinates, we use R theta Z for what we call cylindrical. Cylindrical coordinates. Cylindrical coordinates. So that zero is less equal to theta less than two pi. Zero is less equal to theta less than two pi. Yeah. And then zero is less equal to R, okay, because now the R theta, it's the radius we were talking about. 
Right, becomes a radius we were talking about there. So you're going to have that. The radius we're talking about is between 0 and 2. Between 0 and 2. In view of something called the XY projection, we're going to discuss the XY projection, which is a projection of this in the XY plane. Because if you look at the image of this, uh, I can... it becomes here. It's a, it is here. And this one is x squared plus y squared is equal to 2 squared. It's equal to 2 squared. Right, so we know that. Why is it 2 squared? Because uh, you have the plane z equals 2. The plane z equals 2 is this one. But you see, if ever the paraboloid and the, the paraboloid and, the, and this plane are equal, so the plane is z equals 2, yet... The paraboloid is what? Is x squared plus y squared minus 2. Which means 2 is x squared plus y squared minus 2. Which means that x squared plus y squared equals 4. Right. And this is like 2 squared. Which is giving us the radius that. Looking at something called the xy projection. xy projection. All right. Now, we continue. We need to find the Z, the, 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 the Z limit of integration, which means it's going to be R squared minus 2. Less or equal to Z, less or equal to 2. Therefore, Therefore, the volume is... Can you please explain, sorry, can you please explain the Z interval, like the R squared minus 2Y? Okay, yeah, the, the... Okay, the V interval, yeah? Okay, good. And uh, now... I mean Z, Z, not V, Z. Okay, Z. interval, yeah? Okay, good. Yes, let me, let's discuss it, let's discuss it. Okay, now, the couple of things that remain very important, because whenever the Z is written like this, you would have that Z is this. So you have Z, we have Z equals 2 here, for example. See, Z equals 2, but X squared plus Y squared is equal to what? X squared plus Y squared is R squared minus 2. And the R squared minus 2 would give the equation of the paraboloid in polar coordinates. In what you call polar coordinates. Uh, and obviously these polar coordinates are called cylindrical coordinates in this case. I don't understand how Z becomes Rx squared minus 2. Yes. Because what is X squared plus Y squared? It's equal to R squared. So wherever it is x squared plus y squared at any random point, at any point, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared when you're doing cylindrical what? Cylindrical coordinates. Okay. So now with these then, we have z. What is z equal to? Q. We can see that z here is x squared plus y squared minus 2. What is x squared plus y squared? It's r squared minus 2. r squared minus 2. That is why it becomes r squared minus 2. But now let us analyze this together. So it is the paraboloid. The paraboloid is the equation z equals r squared minus 2. Okay. So it is, it is a... That, so it means that Z is R squared minus 2. That is the this one. Okay. So now you need to express the volume of D as a triple integral. The equation of this is X squared plus Y squared minus 2. But X squared plus Y squared is R squared. Because this is the equation of a circle. So that... Uh, Z is R squared minus 2. This is the equation. But when you're looking at the Z coordinates, 
Right, let's look at the coordinates of that. Which means that we're going to have uh, a couple of things here. Z increases upwards from the origin 0, 0, 0. Z increases upwards. So that now we actually will understand that Z at any point, if you just draw a line like this, or a line uh, on the side like this, is going to pass through the boundary in the increasing Z direction, which is the upward direction, which means that Z at this point is going to stop at this point uh, at the top point, which is Z equals 2, which is the plane Z equals 2, which is uh, the cover of this uh, of this uh, paraboloid. So that Z is going to be uh, at any point, R squared minus 2 is less or equal to Z. But the highest point of Z is Z equals 2. Z equals 2, which is the top part of the what? top part of the plane. So that now using cylindrical coordinates, we're able to do the following. So therefore the volume, therefore the volume is the triple integral which is the integral Right, the integral now is going to be given in terms of uh, three triple integral. Volume is always R dz dr d theta in terms of what? Cylindrical coordinates. Then you have the theta, which is a full revolution, which is 0 to 2 pi radians. The radius. Oh, for this uh, circle at the top, we said already it is x squared plus y squared is equal to uh, 4. Whenever you equate, you make uh, the, uh, the, the, the plane, you make the plane equal to the paraboloid. The plane at the top is z equals 2, this plane. And this plane is like what? It's like this. Like a two-dimensional piece of paper that you have put to cover this. So... We then can see that, okay, the plane is z equals 2. The paraboloid is x squared plus y squared minus 2. Then if this plane and the paraboloid are equal, which means uh, x squared plus y squared minus 2 is equal to 2. With this in mind, it means x squared plus y squared is equal to is equal to 4. But 4 is 2 squared. And this gives us the radius of uh, this particular circle, whose xy projection at the top, you have x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. But if you project it, you squash it, you force it down, you look at its shadow, which is the xy projection um, on the xy plane. X, axis, y axis, they form um, the xy plane. If you imagine z removed, the perpendicular axis removed. Okay. Now, with that mentioned, we're able to say the following. Yeah. Which means, therefore, the radius is 0 to 2. The z is r squared minus 2 to 2. Like that. Exactly like that. But now they said, do not, uh, do not evaluate the integral. Just write it like this. Just write it exactly that way. So if they say you don't have to evaluate the integral, it means you don't have to transform that x squared, like equated to the, I don't know what is the coordinates, but saying that x equals numbers. to r. Yes, whatever cause... numbers. Yes. It's yeah. A... We are well, I mean, do not evaluate means that stop here. Don't calculate the, don't integrate this because you would integrate this. Like with, with respect to z, you would have to find the integral. You know, you'd have to integrate and substitute the limits of integration here. But they're saying don't do it. All right. Yes, they're saying don't do it because this integral might be 20 pi in the end. If you calculate everything, it might become 20 pi or 2 pi, whatever. But yeah, the, they're saying just don't, don't. They wanted to see the, 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 the limits of integration and everything that you've got. But also the fact that when we're studying cylindrical coordinates, it's r dz dr d theta for the triple integral. r dz dr d theta means cylindrical coordinate volume. Okay, so it's something that you need to take note of. And then we move on to the next question. Yeah. 
Okay, so we have done that one. Let's just look at the next question, question five. Question five. Can you see? Let V be the plane perpendicular to the vector 221 and containing the point 002. There is a plane perpendicular to the vector 221 and containing the point 002. Let S be that part of V in the first octant. In the first octant. That is where X is greater or equal to 0, Y is greater or equal to 0, and Z is greater or equal to 0. Find an equation for V. Find an equation for V. Find an equation for V. Let us do this one. So the question is, what do we do in a situation like this and how do we actually answer this particular question? Right, how do we answer this particular question? So we proceed as follows. Right. We proceed as follows. We proceed as follows. Right, so there are a couple of things that we need to take into account here in, in, in terms of how we find an equation for V, the plane. In terms of how we find an equation for V, the plane. Right, so we can be able to find an equation for V, the plane, but we look at actually how we actually can be in a position to find an equation for V, the plane. So now, this is how we find an equation for the plane. Right, so we're doing 5.1. So we can start by saying there's a point x, y, z minus another point. There's a point. So this is 0, 0, 2. Then you take it, you dot it with a vector. 2, 2, 1. And this is equal to zero. X, Y, Z minus two. Uh, sorry, I didn't get what are you doing? What are you doing now? Okay, want to find the equation for the plane. One way, if ever you, you let V be the plane perpendicular to the point, so there's a plane like this. Uh, that is perpendicular to the vector. So this plane is perpendicular to the vector. And this vector is 2, 2, 1. So there's a plane such, such that is perpendicular to this vector. And this plane is containing the point 0, 0, 2. So let S be part of V in the first octant where first octant means that you are dealing with the, like a quadrant. The quadrant is four, octant is eight. So which means that when you're dealing with the, the first octant, you are dealing with the eight regions, the eight regions of the three, 3D space. Right, the, the, the eight regions of the 3D space. There are eight regions of the 3D space. So that then in the end, we have the following. In the end, you have exactly the following. Now, this one is a, is a, is, is, is called an octant. 
Octant has to do with the eight, eight regions that uh, you are able to get here in the 3D uh, plane. 3D plane. 3D, you can no normally call it a 3D space. Right, so if ever you have this, so you, are, you, have, you have been given the, this is the plane V, and the properties that are given with it. So you take a point X, Y, Z, minus another point. So this X, Y, Z is just some points, arbitrary points, right? It's some arbitrary point on the plane. So you take the two points, and this one is, say, suppose here. And then now you take this one, minus this one, you dot it with 2, 2, 1, and therefore, because the 2, 2, 1 is perpendicular to the plane, then this, this, this and that are orthogonal. They are orthogonal vectors. How do we know they are orthogonal vectors? Because you are you have the, the x, y, z plane together with the 0, 0, 2 plane. Now, these ones are on the plane. But if you subtract them, you get a vector on the plane. Subtracting them produces a vector on the plane. Right. If it produces a vector on the plane, then you dot it with 2, 2, 1. The result is 0, which is this. You dot it 2, 2, 1. And if you dot it, the result is 0. Why is the dot product 0? Because uh, the plane is perpendicular to this uh, 2, 2, 1 vector. The 2, 2, 1 vector is, is some normal. It's, it's, it's some normal. So it's, it's a normal, which is a, a perpendicular vector. Okay. So now we're going to do component-wise multiplication, which means x by 2, which is 2x, 2y, z minus 2, 0, which means 2x plus 2y plus z equals 2. Okay, you can write it like that, but you can also leave it, you can leave it this way. We found the equation of a. We found the equation of a. Of a, this uh, uh, plane. We found uh, the equation of this particular plane. But it's not the only way to find the equation of the plane. How else can you find the equation of the plane? We can find the equation of the plane like this, or we can use our old techniques. What are the techniques? We can use. Vector x dot normal is p dot n, which is x, y, z. The normal is 2, 2, 1. The point is 0, 0, 2. And then the normal is the perpendicular, which is the same as this, 2, 2, 1. Which means you have 2x, 2y plus z, which is equal to this by that 0, this by that 0 giving us 2. Which means 2x plus 2y plus z minus 2 equals 0, which is the, the equation of the plane. So the red equation is the same as the green one. So we can use the top method or we can use uh, this bottom method to find the equation of a plane. So we can use x dot n equals p dot n or we can use uh, this one to find uh, the equation of a plane. Any question about finding uh, finding an equation for v the plane? No. Okay, good. Now we move to the next question. Now we need to sketch s. Sketch s and its xy projection. Now we're going to be looking at the projections and xy projections of uh, the sketch. Let us on a, let's analyze this and focus on the x y projection. Now, obviously, now you let s be part of uh, v in the first octant, right? In the first octant. So we note that in particular, s is the s is the shaded. Is the shaded triangle given below? So 
ito z y x okay this is our 3d space and uh, if we're going to look at the plane we've got in the previous uh, question, we've got this plane. 2x plus 2y plus z minus 2 equals 0. We repeat. 2x plus 2y plus z minus 2 equals 0. So that's what you're going to write. So you're going to write 2x plus 2y plus z minus 2 equals 0. Let us... Uh, let S be part of, uh, of the plane in the first octant. So we want to sketch this one, the first octant. The first octant, it is where Y is greater or equal to zero. Yeah. X is greater or equal to zero. Z is greater or equal to zero. If we are in the XY plane, then we then say Z equals zero. If, if, x and y are zero x and y are zero then you have zero plus zero plus z minus two equals zero which means that z equals two so you're going to have for instance z equals two and then now you come to another situation where x is zero z is zero then you're going to have two uh, y x is 0, so it's 2 plus 0 plus 2y plus 0 minus 2 equals 0, which means y equals, y is equal to 1. So this one is going to cut at 1. You continue. y is 0, z is 0 which means 2x, 0, 0, minus 2, which means x is 1. So now you're going to have x equal to what? x equal to 1. And then let us uh, sketch uh, this uh, in the first octant. Uh, this becomes the first octant. So this one is going to be like this. This is going to be this way. Okay, let us draw carefully. So, which means you're going to have exactly this one. And then this one. One, 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 two. Like this. And then we need to shade. That's all. So, now sketch S in the X in its and it's xy projection okay this one is the set s then we continue to look at the xy projection you continue to look at the xy projection the xy projection of this triangle right of this triangle is the following is the following triangle Which means you have this. Which means the XY projection now you're going to be looking at what happens here. So on the XY plane, then you can see that X is cutting at 1, Y at 1, and therefore this is the projection. This becomes the XY projection. Right. So now, the XY projection of this triangle 
is the following triangle. Right, because now if you just only take the what is happening in the xy plane then this is what you're going to get this is what you're going to achieve okay so now we have done the xy projection which is just the image the image of this or the shadow of this uh, in the in the xy plane The shadow of that in the XY plane. Now we are done. Determine the downward flux of F through S, where F is uh, a field, a vector field. So F is actually what you call a vector field. And then we need to just determine the downward flux of F. To determine the downward flux of F, there are a couple of things we need to take into account. There are a couple of things we need to take into account. Right, what exactly do we need to take into account here? Right, we need to look at the fact that we are actually in a position to... Consider every single bit of thing we need. Every single bit of thing we need. Right. Every single bit of thing we need. Let us look at 5.3. Which is this one. Determine the downward flux of F through S. Right. 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 So the question is, what do we have here? What do we have here? Okay, let us determine the downward flux together. How do we find the downward flux? That is the question. How do we determine the downward flux of a vector field? How do we find uh, the downward flux of a vector field? Right, so we continue. Yes. Okay, we continue. Now, to find the downward flux, we need to first consider the normal. So we then say first the normal. The normal to S because S is what? Let S be part of the um, of the plane in the first octant. So the normal to S is the unit vector. Is the unit vector in the direction? Is the unit vector in the direction two to yeah okay? And then you have minus two minus two minus one. We're saying the normal to S is the ve is the unit vector in the direction this. That will be a normal to S. Because if you're then saying V be the plane perpendicular to this one. Right. And if it's the vector perpendicular to these, then the normal to S 
which is no s is the this one s is actually the this first octant this particular part of the plane in the first octant right and then we proceed obviously to shade it we proceed to shade it and this one is our z y x so the normal to s is the unit vector in the direction the length of this vector so now the length of this vector is the square root right so the length of so now we are saying the normal to s is the unit vector in that direction right is the unit vector in the in the opposite direction to this because this is two to one and therefore normal to s is the unit vector in the opposite direction to this opposite to two to one you multiply two to one by negative and then you have this one so that the normal of this vector becomes the following Minus two squared, minus two squared, and then you have three. You have three. The length of this vector, I mean, take its magnitude, you get that. This would therefore mean, therefore, Right, it therefore means the normal, the normal vector, you divide by the length, so it's going to be one third. It's going to be one third of minus two, minus two, minus one. So that you have f dot n. And then now if you have f dot n, you want to find the outward flux. Right, so you dot this one with the vector field. And now you can take out the one third uh, as a common factor and then dot the vector field is x plus z. Together with y minus z, and also with z, you dot it with this one minus two minus two minus one. So you have one third. So now what actually we are able to achieve here becomes exactly the following. You dot this and that. It becomes minus 2x minus 2z. You dot this and that, which is minus 2y plus 2z minus z. One third of the following minus 2x minus 2y minus z because now when you have the minus 2y and the minus 2x are the minus 2z plus 2z is zero which gives us minus z now for the downward flux 
you need to note that this is the first octant. This is in the first octant, where first octant would mean x positive y greater or equal to zero, also z greater or equal to zero. But you need to think about this and realize that if we're speaking about the downward, the word downward, the word downward flux, you need a vector that's going to point down. So if you look at the vector 2 to 1, where x is 2, so the vector 2 to 1, x, y, z. So you have x is 2, y is 2, Z is 1. And therefore, you would do this. X is 2, you do this. Uh, yeah, Y is 2, you do this. X is 2, you do this. So this point in the XY plane, it's going to become what? Right. Right. Right, so that this is 2, 2, 0, uh, when you are here. And then now you're going to look at this one. So this one, so you're going to come here and the point that is here would be having the coordinates 2, 2, 1. 2, 2, 1. Then you need a downward one. So this one is going to be coming from the origin to this. But now if this is the case, then you want it to go down. So you're going to look at what is going to happen in the opposite direction. This is like going up and then it's going down. Going down, this one is the negative 2, negative 2, negative 1. And this is why we are saying the normal to S is the unit vector in this direction. So we are looking at the negative uh, vector there, which is in the downward direction um, to this uh, uh, there in the first octant. Right. 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 So we continue. We continue. Yes. Okay, right. Now we to find the downward flux you you take the vector field dot the normal. That is the formula. So it is one third. We've already got that one, and we got uh, minus two x. We got minus uh, two y minus z, like so. The next thing we're gonna do is to find the vector ds, which is the square root dz dx. which is dz dy. This is the formula that we use, dA for the, for the flux. We use this formula for the flux. Right. So we continue. Yes. Right. So now at this point, this is the formula we, we use for the flux. But now we find the ds as it is there in the study guide. But we need uh, to find uh, our dz dx. And the dz dx becomes uh, exactly the following, right? So we got our z before, 
and uh, you would remember that we got two x for the for the plane two x plus the equation for v two x plus two y plus z minus two equals what equals zero now with this what will z be z will be the same as the uh, for example um minus uh, 2x minus 2y plus 2 and then we have dz dx which is minus 2 and then dz dy so we are getting dz dx which is minus 2 for dz dx Minus two. Then we find that the partial derivative of z with respect to y is minus Sorry. two. Sorry. Yes, please. I asked um why are we using minus like why did we change the signs for x and y to negative? Here in this equation. Because we want to make z the subject. Because uh, of the equation we use for the flux, it is the dz the x. So we must make a z the subject so that we can be able to find the derivative of z with respect to x partially with the partial derivative of z with respect to y as well. So that now, with this, just the transposing the terms, making z the subject so that we can be able to find the derivatives. Okay, at this point, we proceed to say ds, So this one is minus two, you square it. The dz dy is minus two, you square it, plus one dA. Which means that you shall have uh, ds is the square root. Four plus four plus one. dA which implies that ds for the flux is uh, 4 plus 4, which is 8, uh, plus 1, which is 9. dA. Square root of 9 is what? Is 3 dA. Square root of 9 is, is 3. So now we've got a, another equation uh, that we need to use. But we're not done yet because we want to find the downward flux and we proceed as follows. There's something you can do right now, and, and we are effectively then saying now we can calculate we can calculate the flux by converting by converting the surface Right, the flux they want by converting the surface integral. Right, the surface integral to an ordinary integral. To an ordinary integral. Right, to an ordinary double. Double integral. over over the region r the xy projection right because now we dealt with the xy projection before for this region interface octant so we are moreover saying the xy projection Right, so the xy projection drawn in 5b
it is described in Cartesian coordinates as So now, now we can calculate the flux by converting the surface integral to an ordinary double integral over R. The XY projection drawn in 5B. Right, so we looked at the XY projection, which was this. Obviously, the X has both, uh, both uh, 1, 1. We saw that before. We saw that before. Right. So that R, the region. Right. So this one, you can write it as R. Right, and then now if you have the R, then it becomes, it can be written as R. And we have exactly the following, right? We have exactly the following. So okay, you can write it as R equals X, Y. And this would be zero is less equal to X, less or equal to one. Y is, you see, X is this one. So X is between 0 and 1, but also Y is between 0 and 1. But why we can find the equation of this? Because if you find the equation of this, how to find the equation of a line? You use Y minus Y1 equals M into, in brackets, X minus X1. So now what you do is you find the gradient of this. So the gradient of a line is change in y, change in x. This point is the coordinates 1 and 0. This one, 0 and 1. Which means y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. x1, y1, x2, y2. Y2 is 0, Y1 is 1 divided by X2 is 1, X1 is 0, which is minus 1. So that is the slope. But this line passes through one of the points. Maybe you can take 0, 1. And if we take one of the points, we can be the position to find the equation. We want to find the equation of this line. So, which means that you're going to have y minus, uh, this is x1, y1. So, that y1 is 1. The slope is negative 1, x minus 0. Which means that you have y equals minus x plus 1. So this is the equation of the line. Or you can write it as 1 minus x. So, that the, the y... Y is also 1 minus X. Okay. And then you close like this. We compute. Want to compute the following. One, one. One minus X is the equation of this line. And so now if we want to compute the, so we compute the downward. Bobby. Yes, please. Uh, I think you wrote a, uh... 
for the region ne? yes concerning the y interval you said zero is less than y and y is, is less than y minus x squared instead of x where which one you there like y what where you said zero is less than y y is less than one minus x squared i thought it was going to be a uh, one minus x yes it is one minus x is it a square did we did there is a square somewhere is that another two two Oh, this one on the interval like the region this one this one yeah yes because x is between zero and one right because the, this is, is is one x is between zero and one but y y is between what because if x is between zero and one so what you do is i'm, I'm trying to get your thoughts zero to one so this is x so what you do is or you shade this x is between zero and one but y y will be between zero because y is zero here you 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 oh i see it's your it's your curled bracket that confused oh, me i oh, thought you were... yeah that's what, I, that's what i was thinking but i was just like again i thought the, the curly bracket is is clear enough okay so it is a bracket like this Okay, sorry, you thought it's a square. My, my, my apologies. Say. Okay, good. So now we have this. Right, so we compute the downward, we compute the downward flux of F through S. So So we continue. So now this down yes. this downward flux becomes the formula for it is the double integral of f dot n ds is the double integral over the region R. And now the f dot right so we go back to this we go back the f dot n is one third right it is one third of minus 2x minus 2y minus z one third of minus 2x minus 2y minus z this ds what is ds ds is 3da i can do this formula it became 3da ds is 3da so wherever the ds appears we're going to put 3da so wherever ds DA, DS appears, we're going to put 3DA. Meaning this 3 is going to cancel this one. For the outward flask, we found the double integral over the region R minus 2X minus 2Y minus Z. DA. Which means we have the double integral from zero to one, from zero to X. Right, we have uh, exactly this here. So these will therefore be the same as uh, the following. So this DA becomes dy dx x is between 0 and 1 but y is between 0 and 1 minus x okay and then now we have the minus 2x the minus 2y the minus z right and so we analyze this very very carefully 
and we were able to take note of the fact that this would become the following because the plane uh, the equation for the plane v is given by what we've got two x in the beginning we got two x plus two y but we also had plus z minus two equals zero um, and then we transpose everything moving all these things to the other side with minus 2x minus 2x minus 2y minus 2z minus z is minus 2 like this okay so here all these things minus 2x minus 2y minus z is equal to minus 2 because that is the equation for the plane v okay now let us do some integration here. So it means the integral of these is the integral from 0 to 1. But the integral of minus 2 is going to become minus 2y 0 to 1 minus x dx. So, um, why did we ignore the, the equation Yeah, the one that you're pointing at now? Okay, good. Why did we ignore this equation? Well, that's interesting, but we did not ignore it. What we did was, we already know the equation for the plane V. What is the equation for the plane V? We got it in 5.1. It was 2x plus 2y plus z minus 2 equals 0. Now, we want to simplify the integrand here. So to simplify this integrand, we can, this one, the 2x, the 2y, and the z, we can move them across the equal sign. So 2x becomes negative. 2y becomes negative. Z becomes negative. So it means that we would have 2x minus 2x minus 2y minus 2z is equal to... Uh, yeah, minus 2x minus 2y minus z is equal to negative 2. So which means this minus 2x minus 2y minus z is all equal to negative 2, according to the equation of the plane in 5.1. Okay. Now, with this, we are able to do the following. We are able to do the following so that uh, we can integrate here, this one. Right, so if we integrate these, uh, we'll get the following. We'll get exactly the following. We'll get exactly the following. Right, let us integrate together. Right, okay. So we integrate from 0 to 1. So it's minus 2, and then you substitute everything. You substitute the 1 minus x, and then minus 0, dx. And then if you simplify this one, it becomes the integral from 0 to 1. We have minus 2 plus 2x, dx. Right. So it's minus 2x plus x squared from 0 to 1, which is minus 2, 1 plus 1 squared minus 0. And therefore, this is minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. And this is the answer. So we have to find the the out the downward flux so we change the vector 2 to 1 to minus 2 minus uh, 2 minus 1 for the direction downward but this has meant uh, a couple of things but it has uh, meant that 
we can actually be rest assured that in any at any rate we have uh, exactly the following we have exactly the following right it is clear that we can know that the downward flux which is the integral over the surface s of f dot n ds this integral is minus one so that the downward flux of f through s is minus one this is it this is it exactly and so we have solved the question 5.3 we have solved the question 5.3. Okay, now, the couple of things we need to take into account here. But it is the next question. Right, it is exactly the next question. Right, it is the next question. The next question is question six. Consider the R2 to R function defined by this. Find the critical points of F and determine their nature. Right, so we have this one. We want to find the critical points of F, but also we shall find uh, their nature. The question is where do we start? And how do we proceed with solving this particular problem here? Right, how do we proceed with solving this particular problem here? Right, so we will proceed as follows. Um, may I suggest we skip this one? Okay, you think it's too easy? Yes. Okay, good, that's fine. Uh, because uh, if it is too easy, then uh, I'll have to obviously accept uh, your assertion because that is what you think is the, is the right thing to do. There are a couple of other problems, obviously. There are too many problems. Some of them will give them to you as homework. Let's look at the next one. The next one is seven, the method of Lagrange. Use the method of Lagrange to determine the what? The radius and height. The radius and height of a cylindrical tank. Right. That will have the maximum volume subject to the constraint that the area of its outer surface. And the outer surface means the top and bottom included. So, in other words, this one here is not just a cylindrical tank but uh, it has a lead but also it is sealed at the bottom so that you do not have any leaks nothing is leaking there nothing is leaking there right so this is uh, something very very important so now you realize that uh, you have Absolutely no, no leaks. But the area of its surface, the top and bottom included, must be 600 pi square meters. 600 uh, pi square meters. Right, 600 pi square meters. Let us uh, reason this together. We need to get our 10 marks. This question is very much examinable. And we need to master the method of Lagrange like yesterday. And we can't delay its analysis. Let us tackle this question with much, which, with much uh, zest and a very high degree of confidence. And, and, and uh, do number crunching on it and uh, be able to solve this particular problem in detail. We start as follows. Right, to use the method of Lagrange to solve the problem, 
we actually need to take note of the following. We minimize. Right, because we want to want to be in a position to Remember, if we want to actually we'll have the maximum volume, right? If we will have the maximum volume, that there, there are instances where we're gonna obviously maximize, right? So we'll say we maximize, in fact. For the start, right? We maximize. We maximize the function. Right, we maximize the function g. Rh, which is pi, r squared h, subject. Can you please, Um, I've tried this before, but I don't understand what exactly does Lagrange method actually like entails. Like every time what? I come up with, uh, yes, we shall, yes we, yeah, we shall we shall we shall we shall summarize the method. But the method of Lagrange requires two functions. You need to require you require two functions, and now uh, with the two functions, you will actually take the two functions and do what? And uh, use the formula for the method of Lagrange. What is the formula for the method of Lagrange? This is the method of Lagrange. The method of Lagrange says the following method method of Lagrange. The method of Lagrange means that there is a constraint condition. So you find a gradient of the constraint. So there will always be a function that is going to equal a constant, and that we call G. And then we take lambda multiplied by the gradient of another function we call f. So now this is the method of Lagrange. So this, this one is called the constraint. So you're going to establish a function g which is the constraint and then uh, the function who's uh, that we need to um um minimize or maximize whatever that whatever is necessary okay right so at this point we need to we maximize the function g right subject to the constraint Right, subject to the constraint. F. F H R. And this becomes if you have the the the, the thing. This cylinder, it has a lead at the top and at the bottom, yeah? So you have something like this for the um, for the cylinder, huh? Did so you, you'd have... It, um, can you please, sorry? Yes. Can you please uh, clarify, is it F function of H comma R? We, we can or L, like I don't understand. Okay, good. Um, let let me just be consistent. It doesn't matter because these are dummy symbols. It's R H. Let's keep them the same. Right. So this would be what would be the lead because the lead is like a circle. So it's pi r squared, and this one is also pi r squared. So now you add pi r squared plus pi r squared, you get two of the pi r squared. But now this lid, you can open it. This thing, you can open it like this. When you open it like this, then you will find the circumference of it. Because if you 
if you fold it a little bit, whatever to form the cylindrical the side, vertical side of the of the cylinder, this one becomes what you call the circumference of a circle, which is two pi radius. But obviously, this uh, this particular um, tank has a height h. So the area of this is length by breadth. Length by breadth is 2 pi r h. 2 pi r h. All right. So it is exactly 2 pi r h. So if, if it is exactly 2 pi r h, then you would actually be in a position to get the following. So now you'd have we can take right right we continue yes okay we continue okay so you can pull out a common factor from this because now we we have dealt with the the top and the bottom the lead and the base and then we dealt with the side material and then this is forms a rectangle if you cut the the the, the tank open and this uh, forms a rectangle which is the vertical section of the of the tank but if you take 2 pi r as a as, as, as a common factor you have r plus h but um we want to use the method of Lagrange to determine the radius and height of the cylindrical tank that will have maximum volume subject to the constraint that the area of the outer surface uh, must be these. The area of the outer surface. So the area of the outer surface will be the area of the top, which is pi r squared, the area of the bottom pi r squared, which is 2 pi r squared, then the area of the side. But the area of the outer surface is 600 pi uh, square meters. So it's 600 pi square meters. So now, let's do this. Okay, we are, we are here to summarize. I was just writing the motor of Lagrange that we're going to use. But we are in business now because sir, I'm sure that everything is pretty clear. Maybe I, I shouldn't have erased this, but it's okay. We have seen it already. Now, I want us to... The gradient. G or H. Right, the gradient of G or H. We find the gradient of this. The gradient, like I said, is going to be G R then G H. Partial derivatives, right? So the, 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 the derivative of this one with respect to R, which is R squared with respect to R is going to be 2 pi R H. 2 pi R H. The dread of this one with respect to H is pi R squared. Which is F R H. We find the gradient of F R H, which is F R F H. Okay, f is this one, which is this. But we want to find its derivative, right? Its gradient. And then now we're going to find the partial derivative of f with respect to r. So, with respect to r of this one is going to be 2 pi r. This one, yeah, okay, 2 pi r plus, it's going to be 4 pi r. Because you find the derivative of r squared is 2r times 2 pi is then 4 pi r. The derivative of the partial derivative of 2 pi r with respect to r is going to be 2 pi h. The partial derivative of this one with respect to h, this is 0 and this is 2 pi r. If we do this, then we continue to use the method of Lagrange. Now, Right, so now we have the following. Now, Lagrange's method 
Lagrange's method requires that we solve right by method of Lagrange, you need to solve the gradient. The the F is a constraint. So which means that we're gonna be we want to find the maximum volume subject to the constraint. So the maximum volume, this is a, what we want to find. So which means that the gradient of G is lambda, the gradient of F. So we continue. Yes. Okay. This is this one is a method of Lagrange. This because we want to optimize this gradient of G and then lambda gradient of F. Therefore. Therefore, when we're dealing with the gradient of G, which is lambda, the gradient of F, but G R H is the right G is pi R squared H, which is like volume. Because the can that is given like this, the tank that is given like this, the the base is is a circle, pi r squared times the height. F R H. Two pi r squared. Two pi r h. The gradient of G. We have already got it. What is the gradient of G? Right, the gradient of G is G R H is two pi R H, two pi R H, then pi R squared. Two pi R H, pi R squared. Lambda. The gradient of F which is 4 pi r plus 2 pi h plus and, and, and the 2 pi r. So which means the gradient of f four pi r, 2 pi h, 2 pi r. Okay, now let us look at the next thing. Two pi R H is lambda. Now this lambda, good. This lambda is going to be multiplying the first component. So it's four, it's four pi R plus two pi H. Okay, so you do that one. And welcome parallelo. 4 pi r squared is lambda 2 pi r. So the first component we equated to the first, and, and the second component is equated to the second component, just like wise. So at this point, we have exactly that. Hence, We divide through by 2 pi r. Okay, the r is not there, so you can just divide by 2 pi. So if you divide by 2 pi, by 2 pi, by 2 pi, it means that the 2 pi is going to disappear. It's going to give us r h equals lambda. You divide uh, this one by 2 pi, it's going to be 2 r. And divide by 2 pi, this one is going to be exactly h. Okay. And 
you divide this one by whatever becomes a common factor. You divide by pi r, which is exactly the same as what? Which is exactly the same as r is equal to 2 lambda. You divide by pi r. This is what we get. And if we can do this, and then we can see that, and consequently, right, and consequently, two lambda h, right, and consequently, two lambda h is actually. Lambda four lambda plus h. So, in other words, you come to this formula. Wherever r appears, we can put two lambda. So there's r here. We put two lambda for this h. So there's two lambda h. But there's r inside, and then we put two lambda, and then two times two lambda is four lambda plus h and then the lambda is outside so we have put this r in two places so it means that we've put this r in in the places for r like we've put it there and we've put it there like that okay th think about this think about this by substitution of already done, or obviously possibilities in this direction than the opposite. So right now, what is this? Two lambda h is four lambda squared plus lambda h, which is Four lambda squared minus two lambda h plus lambda h equals zero. Okay. Right. We apologize to lose you there, Pehalelo. So that four lambda squared. Now the this minus two lambda h plus lambda h is minus lambda h equals zero. Lambda is a common factor out of this, giving us. 4 lambda minus h equals 0. So that we have lambda 4 lambda minus h equals 0. Thus, From this, we were able to see that lambda is equal to zero, but also lambda becomes h out of four. As lambda is equal to zero, is not possible. Lambda equal to zero is not possible. Right, it's not possible. We see that, right, we see that, we see that lambda is h over four, but this becomes exactly r over two. And where we used equation Equation one. So, so now, if you cross multiply everything, this two, this four, we cross multiply this one, making h the subject, it's going to be four r over two, and if it's four r, four divided by two, it's two. That is r there. Okay. So this produces another equation, but we're not done yet because there's another fact we need to 
use using the fact that using the fact that FHR is 2 pi r squared 2 pi r h which is 2 pi r plus h okay we go we got we got f to be like this why is f like this because we're, we're dealing with a tank that is cylindrical the top is a circle the area of a circle is pi r squared the, and then we saw that if you open it, it's going to be like a rectangle. But this has a uh, height and uh, the circumference is 2 pi r. And we know that the area of a rectangle is length by breadth. Length by breadth. Length by breadth. OK. Right, so. So that in the end, you have the following. Right, so that now we have 2 pi r. But now you know that wherever this is h, you can put 2 r into this. Which means you have 2 pi r, and then you have r plus the h becomes 2 r, which equals 600 pi. We multiply everything here. So what we're having here right now is that r plus 2r is 3r. But 2 times 3 is 6 pi r squared, which is equal to 600 pi. OK, so dealing with cylinders, we divide through by 6. And then we make, we divide through. So this one is going to be 6 pi r squared is 600 pi, and then you divide by 6 pi, 6 pi. Right, which means that, which means that it is exactly 100. You have this one, so, so r, the square root of 100 is 10. This has given us, um, R equals 10, yet H is 2R. H is 2R, which means R is uh, 10, 2 times 10 is 20. So now, obvious, you see, uh, we determine the radius and height of a cylindrical tank that will have the maximum volume subject to the constraints. Right, the constraint that the area of its outer surface, top and, and, and bottom included, must be actually exactly 600 pi square meters. And this is the answer. So at this point, we have got that R is exactly 10, and uh, H, which is the height, the height of this uh, cylindrical tank, the height is 20. The height is 20. Any question about the method of Lagrange? And uh, these obviously is uh, what the method of Lagrange entails in detail. Any question, any input, and any thought. We have taken basically uh, three slides to do this, or three boards. Right. We started by uh, converting the words into mathematical equations, and we're successful. But the method of Lagrange is that the gradient of G with which G must be uh, maximized, and then uh, it is lambda times the, 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 the lambda, time, lambda, lambda times the gradient of F. F is the constraint because uh, F is 600 pi is a condition, but F is a constant. And then we were able to get the answer. Any question on this? No. All right, yeah, think about it and make sure you understand. Uh, it was awesome, awesome having this discussion today. What is your homework? This is your homework. This becomes your homework. 11 months. Let Can you me... please send, send the, the homework the on WhatsApp? Yeah. No, the homework. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, I'll send I'll send it on a, on WhatsApp. Okay. 
Oh, no, I think thank you so much. Okay, thanks a lot. It was awesome having this discussion. Yeah, we're not done because now there's another class that is starting. So that will be after 10. But I will do those things because now I, I have I have some school kids who actually want to learn something until 10 o'clock. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. Goodbye. So now I have Perelelo here. And uh, Zote, Zote, why don't you register? Zote, 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 why don't you register? Zote. Zote, why don't you register? We have been waiting for you to register, Zote. You are busy playing there. What is the problem? Okay, we are starting now, Perele. There are too many things I want to discuss today. Right, there are too many things we want to discuss. <laughs> Zote, why don't you register? Because you don't want to register. And you are busy playing. What is the problem? You don't want to register, Zote. All right, so... Right. Right now, we want to practice more mathematics.